Okay, everyone, um, we're going to make a start. People can think that motherhood is really like banal and everyday, which it is, but it is also an extraordinary experience. My hope is that they get to understand that it's worth documenting this extraordinary experience. Mother changes us, and no one prepares you for that. My name's Catherine Kemp. I'm the founder and director of the New Mothers Writing Circle. On one level, it's a creative writing project for new mums with babies under one. I feel a sense of connection when we bathe together, skin to skin, joined by water like when she was in my womb. It feels ancient. Really, it's a transformational eight week programme that builds confidence, begins a writing practice. So this week, we are going to look at friendships, relationships and community. I certainly feel that motherhood changes us and so changes how we relate to people and the groups we move in, the places we go and the communities that we have access to. When I ran the pilot in 2020, these themes began to emerge and certainly when I was reading, the same themes come up again and again and again. The lack of language to describe a really complicated, complex experience and the shock of new motherhood. We're now at the end of week four, so they're, they're halfway through now. This is Ishbel. Hello. This is not my bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ishbel McFarlane, and I am an alumni of the uh, Mother's Writing Circle, and now sometimes I help Kat to lead the sessions. The first time I held her, it was on my chest. Skin to skin, skin to skin, skin to skin. The holy phrase of my antenatal classes. I felt like a magic healing stone. Lay her on me and the fairies can't get her, can't come and steal her breath. I held her as a stone holds up. I was heavy and happy in my nakedness, like a stone. I was a joyful glacial stone in a flat landscape, left there a million years ago for this. Sun warmed. There's a bit in an Alan Bennett play about sometimes writing like holds a hand out to you and takes your hand and says, me too, you know. So we were talking in the room and we were sharing experiences. Some of the mums had already had kids and they were able to say, oh my first was like that, but then she grew out of it or whatever. You had that in the room, but you've also had these people from all over the world, from all over the UK, people reflecting in these beautiful ways where you could see yourself and you could have someone take your hand in that way. This group is really different because it, it focuses on, on us um, as, as the mother. There were things that I was thinking about on my own but, but didn't really have the language to express them. And then kind of being presented with, with all this different language coming from other mothers as well and um, who are kind of really living through this. When I became a mother in 2017, I felt really hoodwinked by what I had expected. This experience of motherhood was far more challenging and deeply lonely than I had expected. I ended up really unwell, so uh, I stopped sleeping been through IVF to have him, I'd had multiple fertility problems and loss and then and then I yeah I ended up with this baby that I really longed for but um, it was so complicated because I hadn't really had the chance to say goodbye to my former self. I, I ended up with yeah, chronic insomnia which then developed into this mental health problem. Books were a massive part of me getting better 
would write about my experiences and it was a way, kind of a, a cathartic way of kind of processing my experience. I think I was definitely looking for a space that didn't exist, that was a place where I could explore this quite wild experience I was having of new motherhood that was, <clears throat> yeah, it was really challenging. I can't believe that it's been eight weeks since the new Mother's Writing Circle started. I think I was just expecting to, you know, come in and write and maybe do some nice, like, poetry about the wonders of motherhood and, you know, all those things, but actually it turned into something that was very insightful and thought-provoking. Um, and I can't thank Catherine enough for that. It's sort of bittersweet now. It's the end of 14 months of work, 80 women, 81 babies. <laughs> All right, guys. Good morning. Welcome back. This is our final session together. But I wanted to congratulate you all. Um, you have done so fantastically well, all while you are doing the work of motherhood. We'd love to hear from you something that you've written over the last eight weeks. The women finally have kind of practiced sharing and, and they're really ready. Dear boobs, thank you. Why did you let me breastfeed so easily? I didn't think about it. Is that why? And you just worked. We got there, you and me. Let the milk come and boys will come. Saturday night, two nights after the other body parts did their business, the milk came. What a girl you've made. Uh, not worn underwire in nearly seven months, but this is worth it. I think the final week is always really emotional. I think they feel like their experience is mirrored in the room. That gives them a sense of kind of being held by other women and being part of something, an experience that is kind of wild but is very normal. Some brief moments I could go and lie on the grass outside and soak up some sunshine. My small respites, I would lie down and expose my recently stretched stomach to the light, the sun healing those inside out ligaments and muscles, feeling my bones start to slip back to where they want to be. I imagine my inert body resting on the ground and soaking up the quietness of the earth, letting time stretch until the screams begin again, get closer and louder until I see you and my partner in the doorway who needs you. Her birth was precise to the minute, the last moment of the shift at dusk, so that all the women I trusted could be there. Not a single day early or late, the height of spring with the new moon. Washed, combed and dried, it fluffed out like the thick grass we were learning to mow. My children watch me and notice everything. They notice when I lose my temper again and again, when I'm too busy to listen or too tired to pay attention. They see me in all my ugliness. But they also notice when I feel bad, when I apologize, or when I explain that it's not their fault. I'm far from perfect, and maybe that's okay for my children to see this, because they can also see that for them, I will never stop trying to be better. All of these experiences within motherhood are kind of, they're normal. You know, even if we feel very alone in them, 